Hello, this is Chaplain Shelby. Join me for today's devotional entitled, Thanks in All Circumstances. You know, I love the passage in uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, uh, verses 16 through 18, where it's written, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And this passage uh, tells us how we should respond to the situation that life brings our way. You mean we're to rejoice even in the midst of illness and painful situations? Really? <laughs> You're exactly right. Note, the scripture says to rejoice in, not for, the difficulty. Now, this is telling for me because while I do my best to encourage others to give it their all and patiently endure affliction, I struggle to apply it in my own life. Uh, this last six weeks really exposed my hypocrisy as I've tried to recuperate from shoulder surgery. <laughs> sure, I can tell others what to do, but when it comes to time to apply it to my situation, <laughs> well, it seems like I'm preaching, do as I say, not as I do. Over the last six weeks, I've had to go to my wife and say, Ruth, forgive me for my non-gracious attitude. Oh, I was appreciative for her help and her desire to assist me with getting, getting dressed and driving me around and consistently reminding me not to try and pick up things that I shouldn't. And I said, thank you but my heart was far from being thankful for the situation. See, this situation took away my independence, which was a humbling experience for me. I didn't like the loss of control. Now, God knew what was in my heart, but he wanted to give me a chance to see it for myself, or at least acknowledge it. Well, the story doesn't stop there. Last week, I began to feel a little smug and proud, if you will, of how I had progressed without taking a lot of pain pills and meds, and, and I just toughed it out, and now I was feeling pretty good. Well, walking down the stairs of my back porch, I, I wasn't watching, and I, I, I stepped too close to the edge, and my shoe snagged on a nail, tripped, and I fell down, and I almost face-planted right into the ground. Fortunately, most of the fall was broken by my left hand, but the jar from the fall left me sprawled out on the ground in pain. So what did I learn? Well, first, watch where I step, but most importantly, watch how I walk and learn to endure patiently all the circumstances that I face. I learned that I wasn't a stalwart of patience and kindness when I was the one dealing with the illness. I learned I can walk in my own strength and experience what it's like to fall, or I can do what Isaiah 40 and 31 says. But those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. So learn to walk in God's strength. Hard to do when, you're, when you pride yourself in being independent or self-sufficient. I love the taste of apple pie. I love the taste of sweet potato pie. But I don't like the taste of humble pie. But of the three, humble pie has the most nutrition. Eating humble pie helped me to grow in areas that I was lacking in. It helped me to grow in compassion, in empathy, and in patience. The earlier passage challenged us to rejoice, pray, and give thanks. So what do we rejoice in? We rejoice in the fact that even when we fall and experience difficulties, God has allowed it for a purpose. He uses it to mold us, to develop us into men and women of faith. And that is often best accomplished, unfortunately, through difficulties. Then next, he said, pray continually. In Psalm 25, David wrote, In you, my Lord, my God, I put my trust. Show me your ways. Teach me your path. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are my God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. We are to pray expectantly to our God who is big enough to handle any difficulty we face and small enough to understand our smallest need. And then give thanks. Psalm 136 is written, Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Do you know that if we think about it, we can always find a reason to give thanks? Whether it's loss of control, loss of courage, loss of health, even the loss of a loved one, we still have so much to give thanks for. So let's pray about this. Lord, thank you for watching over your people, especially those like me who suffer from the disease of self-sufficiency. Forgive us for fretting over the storm more than being fascinated with the rainbow. Forgive us when our focus is on our calamity rather than on our Creator. Help us mature to the point that we might view the difficulties of life as the Apostle Paul did when he writes in Philippians chapter 4, I have learned to be content whatever the circumstance because I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Lord, let this be our prayer. Amen. That's from the heart.